Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Joseph J. Ellis's biography of Thomas Jefferson, American Sphinx. I believe it's subtitled The Character of Thomas Jefferson. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into an overview of what the book is about, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I recommend the book to, and finish off with what I will be reading for next time. Unfortunately, I, I uh, don't have a cover to share with you uh, this week, but uh, Joseph Ellis uh, is a famous, pretty famous historian. He's written biographies of most of the founding fathers, including uh, John and Abigail Adams, as well as, I believe, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he's also a professor of history at, I believe, Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts. Uh, this book came out in the late 1990s, right around the time of the DNA being used to confirm that uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, had children with Sally Hemings, who was an enslaved person uh, that he owned. Um, and this book, just to give you a sense of when this book came out, that's when that, that around when that happened. And, and the book is kind of tied to that about not only t the life of Thomas Jefferson, but really about the con contradictions that he had in his life, in his personal and professional life, and how someone who could write beautiful words, inspiring words, of uh, freedom and liberty while owning about 200 people. And so the book doesn't shy away from that. The book is really more than anything else, I think a quick uh, summary of his life. I, he Joseph Ellis r writes in the beginning, you know, there's a basically a two volume edition biography about Thomas Jefferson that goes for hundreds and hundreds of pages. He takes a different approach. What he does is he basically looks at different, I would say three to four year chunks of Thomas Jefferson's life and explain, explains kind of what was going on in that life, kind of coming back to again and again to Jefferson, how he thought, how his writings and his views, not only of the country, but of philosophy and, and various uh, political opinions and the way he believed that things should be versus the way that they are. So I think that Joseph Ellis really, I think, does give you a sense of not only Jefferson, the contradictions, but also the context of which of where he was and where the country was at the time. I learned a lot about Thomas Jefferson that I didn't know before. There's very little known about really his early life due to some uh, papers that were lost in the fire. Um, there's to the, even to the point where they were there was arguments or disagreements about what color his hair was because if you see portraits of him, they tend to come much much later in his life. Um, so I learned a lot, and I learned a lot about his political opinions, some of which, you know, obviously looking back today seem quite naive, but also being very impressed by his ability and his power and his words and his writing and his clarity of thought. Um, that also kind of comes out. And even some of his beliefs, I think, again, Joseph Ellis does a good job of giving you context for um, his beliefs. Very few of his beliefs that even sound kind of out there to us today had no basis whatsoever in other famous writers and, and thinkers of the time. Um, and so really the kind of seeing the political arc of his career I thought was really interesting and really kind of he passes away right really when you have the um, party two-party system kind of coming into play and really his presidency was really the first um, really the first instance of a minority party coming to power um, and his beliefs were, I think we would, I mean, if we were putting him in political terms today, be somewhere between a libertarian and an anarchist in terms of how he governed. But even then, again, going back to the contradictions, you had someone who was really dead set into eliminating the national debt, but they did it at a point in time where they also bought the, with through the Louisiana Purchase about half the country at three cents an acre. Um, so that's just to kind of give you just a real brief overview. If you're all at all interested in learning about Thomas Jefferson. I thought this book was incredibly readable. Uh, I read it in just in a couple days. And if you're someone who likes to read a little bit slower, I think there's a lot there to kind of mediate on and think about. And I think Ellis does a very good job of giving you not only his thoughts, where they were at the time, also the thoughts today of these things. And so kind of coming back again and again to kind of the contradictions in him, I thought was a really interesting way to frame the book. Uh, if there's anything that I, I had issues or qualms with in the book, there are a couple times where I think he um, is a little fast to make uh, statements or overviews about Jefferson. I think there's a part where he talks about Thomas Jefferson being somewhat cold to his children. I wish there had been maybe more historical information to kind of back up that claim. Um, 
there was some points where I thought there could have been more context. I think one of the main points of the book, especially later on in the book, is just how much debt Jefferson was in and how normal or abnormal that was. I wish they had maybe gone into a little bit else, gone into a little bit more detail as far as, well, what were the penalties for people? What could be forced upon you if you owed a large sum of money? And by the end of his, his life, I think Jefferson owed, I think it was like $100,000, which would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars today, if not low millions of dollars. So it was quite a bit of money that he owed, uh, whatever the equivalency of maybe it was closer to $100,000 in today's money, but that wasn't, Ellis says basically that's not really super abnormal given the, um, the economy of the time for someone who was a planter um, in Virginia that wasn't really that abnormal. He also goes into a really brief but also really interesting viewpoint or kind of digression about farming on Monticello I thought was really interesting. So there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff here. I, the, other, the only other part where he doesn't really talk very much about Jefferson's second term, he basically says it was something of a disaster, but we go through that relatively quickly and I wish we'd maybe spent a little bit more time there. But the book is about 400 pages and I think it's a good length. It doesn't feel like it overstays its welcome too much and I think there's a lot of people if it's something you're interested in and learning more, I think this did a really good job of not overstaying its welcome in any one place for too, too long, but also giving you, I thought, a pretty good summary or overview of a lot of these things. The history of him and John Adams was not something I had thought very much about, but they had essentially a 50-year friendship, and they are essentially two sides of the the kind of essential question or the undying question in American politics, which is how much power should the federal government have and where should power lie in this system if we are going to have a democratic system. But I would recommend to anybody who is interested in learning about Jefferson and interested in learning about early colonial history, if there's anybody who has a hard time really plating, putting themselves back then and wants to understand the, um, the questions that were, they were trying to figure out at the time, I thought this book does a really good job of hitting on a lot of those major notes. And I think even a general readership, I think, could take a lot away from this book. Um, so American Sphinx really did enjoy it. A uh, few quibbles, but overall I really did enjoy it. And I think if you're someone who does take your time with reading, I think this is good because it is broken down it chronologically. And so it does give you kind of enough to kind of keep going and doesn't like, you don't have to kind of read it in a blitz. But I found it to be very readable. But if you're someone who goes a little bit slower, I think the book is designed for you as well. So uh, American Sphinx, Joseph Ellis, I'm either going to be reading a recommendation by one of my, my subscribers or I'm going to be reading the third book in the um, Children of Time uh, series. So I'm not sure which, which it's going to be next, but please feel free to, if you've enjoyed this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you've gotten a chance to read American Sphinx and want to give me an opinion about the book, please do so below. Um, and until next time, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll have my Twitter link below. Until next time, bye.